Okay. Mm-hmm. Today. Yes. I've got some spooky Puerto Rican legends oh, for you. Oh, okay. Sent in by a couple of listeners. Mm-hmm. This is the Witch's Magic Murder and Mystery Podcast. Oh, hey guys, I'm Kara. I'm Megan. So, like I said, I've been going back through and looking through a lot of the stories mm-hmm. that have been sent to us, trying to pull more from those, because mm-hmm. I've been i I'm having a hard time lately finding my own story ideas. Right. So I really appreciate when you guys send them in. And we've gotten we so many Google good ones lately. so much. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, this is what happened. We'll get, they'll send us a story, but it's something so short mm-hmm. that even for a Tuesday episode feels too short. Right. But still send those in because then I can do something like this where I just group them all together. These Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican <laughs> legends uh, were sent in by two different emails. So, oh, cool. First up, an email from Rebecca. Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm from San Juan, Puerto Rico. I've been listening to your podcast for a while now on my commute to work. Mm-hmm. And it's just so entertaining and fun. Aww. I've always been a fan of spooky stories, so it's right up my alley. I wanted to share a few stories from my island that I thought you guys would enjoy researching. Two of my favorites. La Garita del Diablo, and The Legend oh. of La Llorona. Amazing. No, do you think I pronounced that? I am, like, I just didn't even question it. You forgot for a minute yeah. about all of my issues with pronouncing things. Didn't, I figured mm-hmm. we were... We have entered a new decade, turned a new leaf. We took a two-week break, and suddenly, that's not... Who is this Megan sitting not, next to me? Yeah, that's not really true. It's fine. It's fine. We're Wait, definitely until we get still have some issues. Mm-hmm. First up, let's talk about La Garita del Diablo. Mm-hmm. This translates to Devil's Sentry Box. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Old San Juan is a walled city. The wall was created for military security purposes and to provide protection from enemy attacks. Okay. There were garitas or sentry boxes throughout the wall. And these are like towers that protrude from the wall big enough to hold one or two soldiers. Okay. Okay. And they, like, stand guard there yeah. through the night. So each garita has a small... I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. But oh, like, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you, you definitely are. Oh, yeah. No, I, has, I have no idea. <laughs> each of them has a small window where a sentinel could look out toward the horizon to guard the city. Oh, fun. These are some of the best-known icons of the city. And they function today just like they did 500 years ago, providing incredible viewpoints of the oh. sea and landscape. Okay. So the box at the center of this legend was built in 1634. And it's not located, too long ago, just no, yesterday. Just, mm-hmm. it's, it's located farther away from the others, and it protrudes, like, more out into the ocean. Okay. So the guards didn't love to be stationed at that one because of how far out it was. Yeah, that's scary. It's kind of eerie yeah. out there at night. So. Ooh. Now, when the Sentinels were standing guard in their sentry boxes, they would shout to each other every now and then just to make sure everybody was okay and awake. Oh, cool. Okay. So, since the Garita del Diablo was further out than the others and out over the ocean, they had to shout louder so that the soldier stationed there could hear them. Okay. Over, like, the crashing of the waves. So, one night, when the soldiers were calling out to each other, they got no response from the guy who was stationed at... Garita del Diablo. Okay. So his name was Sanchez. He's more popularly known as Flor de Azahar. Mm-hmm. So multiple calls to him went unanswered. Okay. But no one could, like, leave their own boxes to go check yeah, on Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to wait until sunrise to go see if he was okay. Oh, no. So when they got there, he was gone. He said, screw this. All that was left were his rifle and uniform. Oh. He went streaking. Go no, that's not what he did. The guards said, well, he's clearly been taken by the devil. That's that's all that could That's your that's, very quick deduction. That's all that happens. Legend has it that while he was stationed there, Sanchez had seen a beautiful spirit, and he couldn't resist moving closer to it. Huh. He moved closer and closer, and just before he made contact, the spirit whisked him away. Stripped him naked <laughs> and said, you're coming with me. The thing is, if he's gone, how? who told that story? Right. How do you know? That's my problem with that one. But uh, others had a different explanation. Okay. Let's hear it. Sanchez had been in love with a woman named Diana. He played guitar and he would like sing songs about mm, her. Of course. Now Diana's mother and apparently Sanchez's superior officers did not approve of this relationship. Why? I don't know. That also, not why does it matter if his officers? I know I had the same thought. Have anything to do with his personal life? I had the same thought, but then I'm like, it is like. You know, hundreds of years ago. This is true. This is true. Okay, so Diana and Sanchez have made a plan. They're going to meet one night at his sentry box and Mm -hmm. run away together. Okay. Diana showed up with civilian clothes. He changed into them, and they disappeared 
into the night. Oh. Never to be seen again. Right. Okay. So that legend of Sanchez is the one that I read most frequently when I was researching this story. Okay. And that is about the level of detail that I could find. Wow. Okay. There's one more version of events that I want to tell you about. Okay. Because mainly I only saw it on one website. And you're like, how did this get here? Yeah. Like, why is this one so different from the others? But it's interesting. So I'm going to share it. On UncommonCaribbean.com. I love that. Okay. They don't name the soldier. Okay. But it says that the soldier stationed at Garita del Diablo had a strong sense of foreboding on the day that he was sent there. It was so bad that he didn't even want to report for duty. Oh. But finally he did because, okay. of course, he has to. Right. Been. When it was time for the next soldier to come in and take over for the first, he arrived to find no trace of the first soldier. Mm-hmm. Apparently... This didn't raise many alarms because desertion wasn't terribly unusual at the time. I would say so. And the new soldier assumed that the first soldier had simply run off. Just said peace out. So the new soldier takes a spot stationed in La Garita del Diablo. Mm -hmm. There was a watchman. This is another thing. The watchman's not mentioned in any other version. Okay. Who kept watch over the Garitas. And he watched as a bright flash of light came from La Garita del Diablo, followed by a piercing scream. So the watchman... Runs for help. And when they arrived at the Garita, the second soldier has also disappeared. Oh. They find only black soot coating the inner walls of the Garita, accompanied by a strong smell of sulfur. Hmm? Do you know what sulfur is supposed to be like? The deep right. Smell? Yeah. So according to this version of events, the Garita was never used again. Hmm. So regardless of which legend you believe, La Garita del Diablo still stands, but is off limits to the public. And oh. park rangers actively discourage visitors from trying to go there. The only thing that those two have in common is that a soldier was in that garita right. and disappeared. Right. Right. Like, even in the second legend I read, there wasn't like a rifle and uniform left yeah. behind. It was just yeah, empty. Yeah. So it's, and then the fact that the second version has a second soldier disappears. Uh-huh. I don't know. So it's very, I'm not sure which one to believe. The, like I said, the one that appears more often is yeah. the one involving Sanchez and Diana. Okay. Okay. So now let's meet this subject of the other legend Rebecca mentioned. Yes. La Llorona, um, <laughs> which is Spanish for weeping woman. And you guys might be familiar with this because there was a movie that came out a few years ago with this title. La Llorona is a tall, thin spirit with long, flowing black hair. She wears a white gown and can be found near rivers and creeks, wailing and searching for children to oh. drag into the water. Amazing. So another she good reason like a to good stay time. away from the water. She, exactly. Yes. Jeez. One more thing to be afraid of. Jeez. Giant catfish and La Llorona. Mm-hmm. Mentions of La Llorona can be traced back over four centuries, okay. although we can't be sure where the story originated. She's been connected to the Aztecs as a goddess. Oh, goodness. Okay. Ooh, this is fun. As a goddess known as Chupacabra. Sort of Coahuatl. Mm-hmm. All right. C I H U A C O A T L. Yep. Or Snake Woman. I prefer Snake Woman. <laughs> who wears white, walks around at night, and constantly cries. Oh, that's just, awesome. that's just me, like, yeah. once a month. Another possible Aztec connection is <laughs> it looks like charcuterie. It looks like is could you beat a loose? The goddess <laughs> Chalchitilquiu. Mm-hmm. C-H-A-L-C-H-I-U-H-T-L-I-C-U-E. L-M-N-O-P. Or <laughs> the jade-skirted one. Yep, sure. She watched over the waters, and everyone was afraid of her because she would drown people. Jesus. The Aztecs sacrificed oh children God. to honor her. So she was like, y'all haven't honored me in a while. I'm going to find a kid to drag right. in here. Like I said, she's kind of connected to those, but the most well-known legend surrounding La Llorona is that she was a beautiful young peasant girl named Maria who married a wealthy man, and after they were married for a while and had two children, he kind of lost interest in her. Oh. They talked about how he started drinking more, and he was like a womanizer, and he mm-hmm. would just disappear for months yeah. at a time. And she saw him riding in his carriage with an attractive younger woman. Oh, no. Enraged, Maria threw her two children into the river and oh. drowned them both. Oh. Immediately horrified by what she had done, the grief-stricken Maria spent the rest of her life wailing by the river searching for her children. She stopped eating and just walked and walked along the riverbanks, crying. Her white gown became dirty and torn, and she grew thinner and thinner until she finally died right there on the banks of the river. Oh, wow. Soon afterward, her spirit began to appear, Mm -hmm. still walking the banks of the river. You could hear her wailing at night, and people were, like, afraid to go outside. Well, yeah. After dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
They stopped calling her Maria and started calling her La Llorona. Wow. Her legend persists today, and children are warned not to go out in the dark for La Llorona might snatch them and throw them into the water to their deaths. Sounds great, Mom. Let's, I mean, <laughs> let's give all of our children mm-hmm. trauma. Yes. There are a few different versions of this story, but they all involve a weeping mother and children who've died in the river. Wow. And in some versions of the legend, La Llorona punishes those people who are unkind to their families. Oh. So either way, if you happen to see her, I'd probably just piece right out of there. Yeah. For no I, reason. I gotta go. You don't even Can't need to see top. like a tall, thin woman in a dirty white dress just walk away you, yeah that's sure. no good that can come from that don't make eye contact in there one more story from me. yep this one is another email from kim and she has a whole story to tell us so i'm just going to read her email word for word yeah. okay hi my name so is so don't kim. come at us if you think <laughs> that this is wrong it's kim's words okay <laughs> also it's kim's story so it can't yeah count. hi my name is kim and i currently live in georgia so i'm pretty much just a hop skip and a jump away from all these southern spooky places i love it I just found your podcast and I listen to it every morning and evening when I walk my dog. Cute. I'm just now listening to episode 85, Resurrection Mary, and I mentioned to my husband that I have heard a similar story, kind of like a story that we would tell each other around the campfire. So I grew up in Puerto Rico. Okay. And one story that was very commonly told around the fire was about a girl named Violeta, which is violet in Spanish. The story goes like this. Around the 1940s or 50s, two brothers went to a dance hall one night, and they were just dancing, talking with people, and having a good time. Mm -hmm. During the night, they met and danced with several women, just changing partners with every new song. They were just having a grand old time. When it was time to leave, around 2 or 3 in the morning, like, dang, they can party. They were partying hard. I am in bed. (laughs) For sure. And I'm probably awake at 2 or 3 in the morning, but still. I've been asleep. Yeah, I'm probably getting up to pee or something. They (laughs) So at two or three in the morning, they head to their car, and that's when they notice a young woman waiting by the front entrance to the dance hall. She looked like she was waiting for someone, maybe her ride, but then it seemed like no one was coming. It is two or three in the morning. Exactly. She was looking up and down the road and had a worried look on her face, and they both realized they had danced at one point in the night with her. Hmm. She was a very pretty girl with dark brown hair and blue eyes and was wearing a violet-colored dress. The dress had a halter top, which is important. It comes up later. Okay. So they decided to ask her if she was okay. And if she needed a ride home. Right. She said it was her birthday and she had to come to the dance hall with some friends, but they had left early and she wanted to stay. So they left her there. Oh, don't, don't leave your friends. friends. She just figured that she could get a cab to take her home. Now, remember, this is the 40s or 50s, so there's no cell phones. Right, exactly. The brothers told her it was probably too late to find a cab and they offered to take her home. She agreed and went back to their car. Mm-hmm. This also seems like a questionable decision. On her part, yes. The younger brother noticed it was chilly, and she was wearing a, like we said, the Mm halter top sleeveless dress. So he offered his jacket to help her stay warm. She accepted the jacket, and they got in the car. She got in the back seat. They stayed in the front. Good job, boys. That's good job. During the drive, they asked her what her name was, and she answered her name was Violetta. The younger brother laughed, and he was like, your dress matches your name. (laughs) (laughs) Clever. She smiled and said it was her favorite color. That's like when people call me red. Right, exactly. Mm, Clever. I love it. She didn't give an address to her home. She just gave directions like, turn at the next corner. Mm -hmm. When you see a greenhouse, make a left. Yeah. During the drive, she's super talkative, has a conversation with ease, and then all of a sudden, she gets very quiet and wouldn't talk at all. And if they asked her something, she would just smile and turn her head to look out the window. Hmm. After a few more minutes of driving, she suddenly tells them to stop. They stopped, and they could see there's a path on the side of the road that went into the woods, but they couldn't see a house. And they were right. like, we'll walk you to your door. Right. But she said, no, if my parents notice that I'm getting home so late, I'll get in trouble. So I'm just going to sneak in. So they stay in the car, and they watch her walk down the path until they couldn't see her anymore. Okay. She disappears into the woods, and they drive home. Mm-hmm. After a few minutes, the younger brother's like, dude, she has my jacket. Oh. And wanted to turn back to get it. But the older brother is like, no, nah, it's too late. Yeah. And we'll get her in trouble. Right, exactly. So he's like, we'll just go back tomorrow and find the jacket. So yeah. they went home, and the next morning, they drove down the same road to find the path they'd left her on the night before. So they find the path. Okay. And they walk down to find a house tucked in the forest. And then she put, or jungle. It is Puerto Rico. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. So they knock on the door of the house, and an older woman answers. And they said, can we speak to Violetta? Right. And she said, there hasn't been a Violetta around here. (laughs) But the woman just stared at them and they became visibly upset. 
she's like, this is not funny. You need to leave. Oh. And she starts yelling at them and tears up and she's just visibly distraught. Right. The brothers are like, what is happening? Yeah. Like, what? Well, yeah. And they're like, we're not trying to be disrespectful, but like we loaned Violetta a jacket last night and we want to get it back. And the mother's like, when did you loan her the jacket? Like, what are you talking right. about? So then they just tell her everything for the night before. Okay. And then the woman's like, come on inside. And she leads them through the house and out the backyard. Okay. They follow her, but they're like, you know. This is weird. This is sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Further down the backyard, they could see a low stone wall and a gate. The woman told them that Violetta was her daughter and had passed away 10 years ago. Oh, my gosh. She'd gone to the dance hall to celebrate her birthday, but her friends had left her Mm -hmm. because they wanted to leave early. So she had to walk home. And during her walk home, she was struck by a drunk driver and instantly killed on the road. Oh, my gosh. As they reached the gate, the brothers noticed it was a family pot, and they noticed the jacket folded neatly (gasps) on Violetta's grave. Oh, my gosh. They think that when Violetta became quiet during the ride, that must have been passing the part of the road where she had been killed. Yeah. Look, I've read that story. I know that story. And I still got chills. Yes. Same. I hope you enjoy the ghost story I grew up hearing. I love your podcast. Keep doing what you're doing. Much love, Kim. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So, Kim. What a cute little story. It reminds me of the one in Louisville where they, isn't that the one where, like, her handprints are on? That's um, Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. That's the one she mentioned in her email. So, I remember when I was researching Resurrection Mary, Yeah, the whole vanishing hitchhiker legend is one that shows up a lot throughout history and across several different cultures. Right. So I did another quick search for today's episode to learn more about the legend itself. Mm -hmm. And here's what I found on Snopes. I'm just going to read it directly. According to folklorist Jan Brunvand, Mm -hmm. the legend of the vanishing hitchhiker evolved from earlier European stories, usually about travelers on horseback. Okay. In Hawaii, the hitchhiker became associated with the ancient volcano goddess Pele. Which you've done an episode on. Yes, I was going to say that might sound familiar because we did her curse mm-hmm. in episode 51. A prototype, don't take her rocks. Yeah, don't take anything from Hawaii. A prototype of the vanishing hitchhiker story even shows up in the New Testament of the Bible. Oh. Acts 8, 26 through 39, in which an Ethiopian driving a chariot picks up the apostle Philip who baptizes him and then disappears. Oh, I thought that was fascinating. That is fascinating. So I also found this interesting research article from the 40s that talks about the history of the vanishing hitchhiker legend. I included it in the sources listed in the show notes. So if you're into that sort of thing, you can check it out. You can only read the very beginning for free. But sometimes if you work for a college or university or if you're a student, you'll have access to like the databases to be able to read the full Mm -hmm. article. Anyway, They basically tried to trace back all the different legends in order to find, like, the original source of the tale. And spoiler alert, they couldn't find a source. But they do delve into the sources of different aspects of the story. So, like I said, if you're into that kind of thing, it would be a a cool read. Yeah, that would be a fun little read. So, yeah, those are it. Those are just three interesting Puerto Rican legends. Yeah, I love it. I like it when different cultures have some of the same. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, and they say that the La Llorona one. Uh Uh-huh. Is not just Puerto Rican. It's basically, it shows up kind of throughout the Southwest and a lot of different Hispanic cultures okay. over and over in, in different forms. Huh. And one of the sources that I had, I think it is the legendsofamerica.com source that's in our show notes. Okay. At the end of the article, they have all these first person accounts from people who sent in their own oh. encounters with La Llorona. Oh. And it was really cool. It was I really cool. That. So if you want to hear more about her or get an idea of what it's yeah. like to see her, go check out that source. Yes. Okay, that's all. Wow, that's so fun. I know. All right. We love you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye.